What's crackalackin' it's your boy bro Schmo. just in case you did not know so and we're gonna go over the top prospects on the offensive line going into the 2020 NFL draft still a lot of people may declare so this list obviously subject to change but I'm going with the top 25 for tackles and a top 20 for offensive interior but because on average uh what was it 21 tackles are taken over the last five years and then 19 interior linemen are taken Again, over the last five years so I thought it'd be safe safe bet we could do a 25 uh, top 25 and a top 20 so we'll do that before we do that go ahead and become a bro and subscribe and leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content uh, I believe I released a poll yesterday seeing what video you wanted to see next in this uh, rankings I guess series it's become so be sure you go vote on that and uh, with the holidays coming up and all that, uh, some of the con uh, there will be a little less content on the channel for the next few weeks. I mean, you'll still get predictions. You'll still get um, uh, that mock draft I'll have in another two weeks. Uh, you'll still get the ranking videos. But on the early, expect very early January more content to start getting pushed out, like with the NFL offseason and such. But without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's dive in. We're going to start with the offensive interior, and we're going to go over 11 through 20. And first first quick side note, you're going to notice two names not on this list for interior. Caesar, uh, both of them are actually Michigan Wolverines. Caesar, uh, I believe it's pronounced um, Rirez. Rirez? I, I probably butchered that but he was he was the top center recruit um a few years ago i believe he, he's gonna come back and he should he definitely needs to add some strength to his frame he's a really good pass blocker but you you could tell once he gets to the nfl you need strength not ne i mean we saw okay we saw it with garrett bradbury this past year it was the best pass blocker in the draft and he struggled immensely in his first year there in minnesota so i think coming back and working on that be be just really good for him and then ben breedson i'm gonna leave a little uh check out the little i thing i did a uh most overrated or overhyped prospects um coming into this year or prospects that are fallen and i talk about ben breedson there and so i'm not going to talk about him here i've done it enough but Let's start with 20. We got Tremaine uh, Ankrum out of Clemson. The dude, he's con he's going to be a tackle con uh, convert. So it, just because of the lack of athleticism, you're going to see that a lot. A lot of this interior class is going to be tackles in college converted into guards or somewhere in the interior. So you're going to see a ton of that. On to the next. Solomon Kinley, a guy that a lot of people, in my opinion, are overrating. I think he should stay. Um... I mean, we saw it this year. I mean, it's not like the Georgia offensive line really, uh, they're, they're really heavy on their run blocking scheme. So you're not, they're not really asked to pass block a ton, if any. And I mean, you could see the lack of footwork, especially not, not a lack of footwork, but he definitely needs to work on his footwork. He's athletic enough. He's strong enough. But we saw in games against South Carolina, Missouri, where he faced elite prospects like Ken Law and Jordan Elliott. And he got messed up. I'm just saying right now, I got a six-round grade on him. I know other teams are high on him. But the dude's got a t big ceiling, high potential. So, you know, I don't blame him. I don't see him as a as a day one or a day two pick. Uh, Hakeem Adenji out of Kansas, another tackle convert, another guy who's actually pretty athletic in his own right. Joe Simpson out of Clemson. I'm going to just kind of... Bust through it, bust through these. So, because there's a lot, we're talking about a lot today. <laughs> but uh, you got Jake Hansen out of Oregon. You're gonna see a lot of Oregon offensive linemen here. Um, the dude's just—he's got a ton of. He, he's penalized a ton. That's why it would drop some here. Tommy Kramer, another guy. A lot of people are really high on him, but I put him here because of lack of athleticism. You know, that's not gonna translate well. You're already fighting an uphill battle going to the NFL with a lack of athleticism. And then we got Robert Hunt, a guy I really like. Another guy who's going to be a tackle, con um, he's going to convert from tackle to guard. Uh, he's got high upside, but he doesn't have a lot of experience as a pass blocker. I mean, that Raging Cajun team, they they run a heck of a lot. So, I'd, I, he, I like I said, he's got a high upside, just not a lot of experience as a pass blocker. We got Cushenberry, we got uh, Logan Sternberger, who's kind of fall. He's fallen a little bit off my list. I had him um, at the beginning of the year. He wasn't really in my top 10. Then he jumped to my top 10, and now he's falling back. The guy's just 
Same thing with Jake Hansen. The guy's penalized a ton. He has improved as a pass blocker, but you do. You, I want to see a little more discipline. And then finishing it off, uh, rounding it off here, we got uh, Shane Lemieux, another Oregon guy. And then top 10. Let's start with, uh, we got Nick Hansen, but let's talk about Trey Smith because Trey Smith is a very interesting prospect. Beginning of the year, a lot of people thought he would be one of the top tackle prospects in here, but um, they've because they, he played tackle last season but they moved him back into his natural position where he initially started at left guard and he suffer, he's got a few medical red flags with the blood clots in his lungs it has cost him time all the last couple of off seasons but you could really tell the rust because the first his first two games back uh, i think it was georgia state and i think it was byu he just did pretty poorly but but since then he has been great he's been phenomenal i would actually really like it if he stayed another year because i could really think he could improve upon that draft stock michael uh new uh Anwen new is a guy i've talked about immensely on this channel I, I love him i think he's a sleeper in this draft walker little oh man you could check him out on my most over uh over hyped prospects uh the guy he i think he he doesn't have the athleticism right now or at least from what we've seen not this season because he's been hurt but season before to play tackle i think he would benefit from staying uh another year and i think he will but um yeah i i, I if he were to come out i i think he'd be a guard prospect and then we got matt hennessy at a temple the guy's been amazing he's a senior bowl invite um he plays stronger than he looks he's just been probably the best center in college football and that's including biotish and then we have Cal Calvin Throckmorton. He's got another guy that's a tackle. It's going to probably convert to guard. But he has the versatility to play anywhere. He, ha he has played everywhere on that Oregon offensive line, and I like him a lot. Here's a guy, Wyatt Davis. I don't think he's coming out. He's only a redshirt sophomore, but he's going to be really good. He's going to be one of my top prospects come if he decides to stay come the 2021 uh, draft athletic powerful hasn't allowed a sack this year he's really good Nate moody another guy i think is going to end up staying just because he's got the injury red flags i think this time it was the foot if i'm not mistaken i'm not positive on that but i think he's coming back creed humphrey his momentum like he had a big climb but oh last couple of last few games man he just really hasn't played well so this playoff these playoffs are going to be very substantial for him and his draft stock Especially that game against LSU, it's it's going to be an important one for him. And then I think the consensus is Tyler Biotish is the top offensive interior lineman in this draft. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the offensive tackle class. And then let me talk real quick about Alaric Jackson. It looks like he's coming back. There's been strong reports he's coming back, which is good. He needs to. He started the year out hurt. He lost weight in the offseason so he could become more athletic and it just didn't when he got back he just didn't look it you know as far as he didn't look it on the field he was still having his feet weren't moving quick he was having trouble laterally so i think he will benefit from another year but i didn't include him on this list for that uh alex taylor out of south carolina state he's got a very imposing frame i mean he's played basketball in high school but he lacks superior strength and i mean for me he's a developmental prospect right here charles he's had a few uh bad games this year same with cole van lannan and actually you could throw justin uh heron on up there too that clemson game wasn't wasn't top notch but these guys they have they have a very good skill set like they have technique down it's just they have bad games on on tape against really good teams so let's talk about uh thayer munford first because i believe he's probably going to end up converting to guard but um he lacks athleticism but the guy's got long arms man he he can he, he'll put the distance on you so there's a lot of things to like about munford he's very experienced um he's held down that left tackle position i think this is the second season so like i said a lot to like about him going on to charlie heck out of north carolina the guy he's he's just a he's gonna be a really good pass blocker he is um i really hope i no i don't think he's got a senior bowl invite i want to make sure he's even a senior i believe he is 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know if he's got an invite. I need to take a look at that list, but I think he would definitely, definitely reap the rewards of that. Then I got Yazir Durant out of Missouri. This guy, he's actually pretty athletic, and a lot of, a lot of places, a lot of sources I've seen say he's probably going to translate better to a guard. But I, honestly, as a, I think he has great potential as a swing tackle, swing, uh, swing guard. Um, I don't know. I like. I'm starting to. I'm starting to turn the corner on him uh, as a prospect. So he might climb up my list. Prince Tango Wanagoho, guy I was high on at the beginning of the year. It's just he's super raw, and we still see it. You know, he doesn't have great technique, but man, he's got he's got raw skill. You know, he's I don't want to say skill, raw physical tools. He's looks a monster. He looks a beast. So. I mean, you can build upon that, but I don't really feel, but feel like uh, feel like he's a fifth rounder at best at this point. And then we got a couple of other guys here: Ezra Cleveland, uh, Terrence Steele, a guy with high upside. Uh, Colton, uh, uh, what was it? it? Oh man, I'm I'm not even gonna try it. I practiced it. I practiced <laughs> saying Colton. Uh, what was it? Uh, McVitz. Ah uh, man, I practiced it before I got on camera, and bam! The minute the minute the sucker starts rolling, man, just my mind blanks. But he's got a lot of experience there. Same with uh, Scott uh, France. Um, Jared Hilbert is this guy that's been flying up my boards. Um, I had him ahead of Trey Adams at one point, but uh, I kind of reeled back on that hype train there. Matt Pert out of UConn's been really good this year, and um, he needs to add strength. He needs uh, a little better. He's got some flaws in his footwork, but he looks really good. He, I mean, as far as from the eye, he's gonna pass the eye test, you know. And then uh, my boy Makai, um, I'm little, I'm sad he's not gonna be playing in that uh, bowl game against Mississippi State. I get it, um, but he's got high upside. I think he's a little bit raw, but. I mean, he's really been hurt by Louisville's system. I mean, they're a really heavy um, read option type of type of offense, and it doesn't really benefit him uh, to learn as a pass blocker. On to the tackles, top ten right here. Top ten. Um, these first, uh, actually, this uh, Lucas Nyan. He's my la- last third. I got a third round comp on him. Comp third round um, grade on him, but. Um, very athletic. Another, another guy who's kind of raw on his technique. He's kind of protected by the scheme there at TCU. But it looks like he should. Like he, he looks to be a very good pass blocker. So, but again, he's been hurt this year. So, question marks, you know. And then now we dive into the second round right here with Jack Driscoll. He's outplayed Prince Tango Wanagoho all year. I love Driscoll. He's going to be at the Senior Bowl. Be sure to check that out. Trey Adams is a guy I constantly constantly get um i don't want to say get crap for but the name that's constantly brought up when i do mock drafts um i mean i don't th- just <coughs> excuse me the biggest red flag with with him not even the biggest but he's got a ton of medical concerns that by itself for me doesn't doesn't make like it does it takes you out of the first round but on top of that, it's his play against good competition against um, like Utah, against uh, Bradley, uh, was it Nye, um, Oregon, against um, uh, Thibodeau. Like he, he's against good, if not great competition. He seems outmatched. He just has bad games. So honestly, I want to see him in the Senior Bowl. I'm not positive if he got an invite, but. Um, I do want to see him in like one-on-ones and such. Uh, Austin Lawrence, again, another guy, raw technique, but he's so athletic. He, I mean, the guy can literally make up for missteps. He's really good. This game against Iowa, the bowl game is going to be very important. I look forward to seeing him matched up against AJ Epinesa. And then Samuel Cosby, I don't know why. A lot of people aren't that high on him. He's super athletic. He, I mean, he barely allows, if any, pressure on Sam Ellinger. Um, I think he'll probably come back. Because I think he has a chance to be a top 15, top 20 pick next uh, in the 2021 draft. But I'm surprised a lot of people aren't as high on him. And then here are all like these these next five. I think they could all they could all be top 15 picks. Uh, I mean, Josh Jump. He's going to be at the Senior Bowl. Um, I think we can see a 
what was his name out of uh, Alabama State? Was it Tyrus? Tyrus Howard? Um, I think we could see a, a rise like that. Because Tyrus Howard, I don't think I'm not saying the same. Pro, they're the same uh, prospect, you know. Because I think Josh Jones is a lot further along than uh, Howard was. But I mean, that guy's draft stock rocketed after the Senior Bowl, and I think same could happen for Josh Jones. We got Leatherwood. I love Leatherwood. Uh, Jedrick Wills. The dude's very explosive. I mean. He pancakes like nobody's business. Like, he does it like he was Orlando Pace himself. Kind of. Pace was pretty good. And then Tristan Wirfs and Andrew Thomas, both extremely athletic guys, guys with a lot of strength. Um, I think they're the consensus one and two in this draft as far as from the tackle position. But that's it for the video. Go ahead, let me know what you want to see next. And uh, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later. Later.